everyone. My name is Neharika Ghadge and I welcome you on behalf of YLCC. We are here with a series of interviews of law students who made their own way to reach the destination you might be secretly willing to reach. Today we have with us Alifia Olia from Maharashtra National Law University of Nagpur. Alifia is a second year law student and is an active mooter. She recently won the SLS Nagpur National Moot Court Competition in 2022 emerged as a, an awardee for the second best memorial of the 27th Stetson International Environmental Moot Court Competition and has also emerged as a semi-finalist of Louis Brown and Forrest Mostyn International Client Consultation Competition and therefore we have requested her to share her experience with you all today. So without further ado, let us begin with the session. Uh, so to begin, how about you briefly introduce yourself to the audience, Alifia? Uh, sure. Um, hi, everybody watching. Uh, I'm Alifia and I'm in the second year uh, at Maharashtra National Law University, Nagpur. Uh, I'm originally from Chennai and, uh, you know, I gave my CLAT also from Chennai. And eventually I got um, I got allotted MNLU Nagpur and I came here. So, yeah, that is about me. Okay, so moving on with the questions. How would you describe your law school journey till now and what was the effect of COVID? Uh, right. So I think firstly, uh, my law school journey started, you know, not on a, the, on a, not on a very positive note because I wasn't the happiest when I got a lot of MLA in Akbar because I used to think that, you know, it's a tier three national university. So it's not going to help me. It's not going to be the most fruitful experience. I used to think that way. So then I, during the COVID period, when it was all online, I really made sure I changed my mentality and I changed the way, I changed my outlook and the, I changed the way that I sort of view and perceive myself. So then I would, you know, as any law student does, I went on LinkedIn, I made my profile, I checked up the LinkedIn profiles of everybody else and how, and there I sort of looked at their growth project, uh, trajectory. And I sort of, I noticed that, you know, it, took them time to get uh, where they were. It, they built themselves to get where they were. So that's something that I thought that I should also do. And then I eventually understood that merit is important and that, you know, if you work hard, it's never going to go for waste. So yeah, in my first year, I think that's something I worked on. I tried to balance academics and I tried to um, look at what my interest areas were. I tried to look at, you know, debate competitions that I could pick up and do. We didn't have our intra, uh, we didn't have our intra mood code competition by then. So I didn't really pick up a mood co code competition in my first year. Only did that in the second year. But yeah, I think so if you're feeling demotivated, like I did initially, when you don't get allotted, let's say a tier one national university, and you're thinking that, you know, this is it for me. This is the end. I can't do anything. Like um, it, it's for sure that, People in tier one national universities or tier two even, they have a lot of resources, let's say more resources than we do. And they also have a lot of opportunities because they have an established alumni base, right? We don't really have that. But that does not mean uh, that, you know, your efforts would not, would go to waste so that whatever you do uh, will have no merit. That it does not mean that. So I think you should just look uh, more positively and try to keep working on yourself. Right. Right. I believe many people actually needed to hear this. So thank you for pointing it out. Yeah. So moving on to this question, amongst other moot court wins, uh, you have recently won the SLS National Moot Court Competition in 2022. So how would you like to describe your experience, mostly focusing on the preparation stage? Uh, right. So the way I look about mooting is that, you know, uh, for sure that it requires a lot of researching and it requires all of these skills. I usually take up moods. I make sure that I'm an orator or a speaker in the mood. So I also have to ensure that while my research skills are good, I'm also, you know, I have a good grasp over how I'm going to be conducting myself while, um, you know, the mood itself, like while the physical rounds happen. So I think in the preparatory stage, uh, what you're supposed to do is get well versed with the mood proposition. Uh, make sure you take copious notes. You can look at the previous years. You can look at moot recordings. So a lot of universities conduct moots and domestic moots. They deal with uh, national law. They deal even if it's some other country who has a law that's paramaterial to the Indian law. It's mostly domestic law. So it's probably something that you're well versed with. So 
what we had for SLS Nagpur was uh, domestic arbitration law. Although it's, it hasn't been introduced as a subject to us yet because I'm in my second year. Uh, I still, you know, sort of picked up the Bear Act. I would read all the important sections and I did an internship that also dealt with, had a lot of matters in arbitration law. So then I, I think I got well versed with that. So I think that's what you need to do. Just read the law and make sure you sort of understand, you grasp the basics of it. And before you move on to something complex, just grasp the basics uh, and just keep keep practicing your oratory skills, keep practicing your speaking skills. I think that's very important. Right, so uh, along the same lines, since you've also been a part of the team in an international competition, how different an experience would you say it is and what different approach do you have to apply? Um, right, so firstly, the most basic difference is that any domestic moot, it deals with domestic law, but Stetson, for example, dealt with public international law. So it was a completely uh, different experience for me because I had only ever dealt with something, you know, with regards to uh, criminal law or domestic law or IBC or arbitration for that matter. And I never sort of ventured on into public international, law, although I really, really enjoy international law as a subject. And I would do a lot of MUNs in school. So that's something that I enjoyed since schooling. So I was very happy to take on that mood. Um, I was a researcher in uh, in the Stetson mood. But something that I observed was that, you know, I didn't mind being a researcher because I thought that when you take on a really, when you take on a mood as big as Stetson, like you, you know, you have the top four modes at like Jessup, Wiss, um, Stetson and Oxprice. So, those modes often get allotted to fourth year students but i've been seeing like i've been following linkedin a lot of these posts you see that a lot of second year students are doing really well so then this it's also a misconception that if you're not in your fourth year you won't really understand complex legal issues i don't think it's like that but i think you should just take don't, just don't take more than you can chew right if you have a lot of responsibilities take something that you can sort of do uh, perform in your best abilities at so I, in December, I had also taken up Louis M. Brown. So I thought that it would be best that if I uh, had, if I performed the role of a researcher in, in Stetson. So I think that was the difference between SLS. When I did SLS Nagpur, I had a lot of time. Like I could devote all of my time to it. And I, so, so I ensured that I was a speaker. But when I did Stetson, I had two uh, very important competitions clashing. So I took the role of a researcher. And I really enjoyed researching for it. Public international law and international environment law is something that I'm really interested in. So I think there's another suggestion that I would give to anybody who is wanting to do, um, you know, moods with uh, their own key interest area. For, for example, if you're interested in corporate law, then you can pick up Saraf. If you're interested in, let's say, international environment law, you can pick up Stetson. If you're interested in air and space and aviation law, you can do lead and sarin. So there are a lot of modes that cater to very niche, nuanced, specific areas of law that you might be interested in. So I think that's another very important thing that you sort of streamline your interests. So, you know, you can um, you can further decide what you want to do. Let's say you want in your LLM, you want to specialize in international humanitarian law. So if you pick up Ox Prize, that would be in alignment with your goals further. Right. So like you said, you have also participated in MUNs before. So how would you say that experience does help you? Uh, so in school, I would, you know, participate in a lot of MUNs because I think I just had this, um, you know, you say Kida for extracurricular activities. So I would just take up anything that came before me. And that meant a lot of people in my school, a lot of my seniors that I really adored, they were doing a lot of MUNs and they were doing really well at MUNs. So firstly, MUNs, they give you an opportunity to understand things that you're not really taught at school. So understanding the intricacies of a world organization the united nations understanding what each of its organ is doing and world affairs and politics and you understand that and it you, you know you're sort of able you're able to cover niche for yourself like i would only take up i would always participate in the dissect community which is the disarmament and security com uh, committee i mean so i would uh, always 
just you know take, I, and i would take a brush off i remember always taking a brush off because that was the most difficult country to crack so i think you should just find things that challenge you like if you're really scared of public speaking which i was at one point you should take up activities that require you to get out of your comfort zone because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter you know what other people perceive of you like if someone telling you hey i don't think you're a good speaker don't listen to that just if you really you know if you want to um explore something if you want to let's say build a new skill i think you should go ahead and do it and it's never too late for that right so one last question what plans do you have for the remainder of your law school journey there's a long journey ahead for you actually yeah yeah i think it's too early to tell i'm just in my second year but you know as i said i've always been very interested in international law so i think that um, whatever i do in the future will sort of be in alignment with that um apart from that i think in my llm i will mostly so yeah i think i've decided that i want to do an llm after um, uh, university but i also think that you know i'm not really sure i could be doing getting a little bit of work experience before i apply for an llm i've been looking at a lot of people uh, from the fourth and fifth year from my university itself who got into oxford who got into cambridge then uh, there's another person that i really really respect it's hatim hussain from gnlu who got who happened to get the rhodes scholarship uh, so i think i look at his profile too i look at people who done incredible stuff who achieved a lot to come from very humble backgrounds and have managed to do a lot of great things i think that has that really gives me direction so even though i right now feel quite directionless i don't have any one particular thing i want to do it's a very broad uh, there's like a it's a very broad ambit or scope of things that i want to do right now so i think eventually as i do more internships as i publish more or let's say i do more competition i think i, I will really um, gather what it is specifically that i want to do right that was a wonderful session alifia thank you for taking your time and sharing your inputs we hope thank our you. audience will benefit immensely from your experience i wish you all the best on behalf of ilcc for your bright future ahead thank you thank you so much for this opportunity and good luck to everybody watching